Today, we are going to do directing part one. And in this, we will understand the concept of directing and its importance. Now, what is directing? Directing is called the doing function. Now, the first function is planning in which everything is thought of, but nothing is done. It's only in the directing function that the things are actually done. So it is the process of instructing, guiding, counseling, motivating, and leading the people. So in this function, that the workers, the people, the employees in the organization, they're instructed about how the work is to be done. And if they have any problem, they're guided properly, they're counseled regarding any problem that, we, that they may be having. And if they're not able to achieve the targets, they are motivated and led from the front. So directing has got a lot of elements. It's got four elements, basically. So directing is also called the key function or the doing function. Now, what are the features of directing? First of all, it initiates action. Action is undertaken in this function only. In the planning function, that is the first function, we start thinking. It's a thinking function and directing is the doing function. Then directing takes place at all the levels. Everybody has to direct. The top management directs the middle, the middle, the lower, the lower, the workers. And it is a continuous process. It goes on and on. And directing always flows from the top to the bottom. Your superior will direct you. You don't direct your superior. So the superior directs his subordinate. His subordinate directs his own subordinate. Like that, this is how directing flows. Now come to the importance of directing. There are five importance of directing, and we will do them one by one. First is directing helps to initiate action. The action or the work is done only in this function. Like for example, when the director says action, the actors start emoting. Before that, they may be positioned before the camera, but nobody's doing anything unless the director says action. So it is a directing function in which action is actually done. Now, how do the workers work if they don't understand what is to be done? So under directing, the manager clears the doubts, the superior or the supervisor, he clears the doubts of the workers so that they understand how it is to be done and they're able to achieve the target that has been given to them. So if each worker is able to achieve the target, then the organizational targets will automatically be achieved. Therefore, the first importance of directing is that directing initiates action. Work is done under directing. Then second, integrating employees' efforts in the organization. Now, there's so many people working in the organization and their effort has to be integrated because everybody is doing their own work. So individual effort and organizational effort needs to be integrated. And on a lighter tone, I'll give you one example in which a manager, he had sent four of his workers to shift a car that was parked outside for quite some time. So he sent them out and he said, you just move that car from there. And these four people went and never came back. So after waiting for 20 minutes, the manager also went outside to see what's happening. And he saw that two people were pushing the car from the front and two were pushing from the back and the car was not moving. So then he told them that all four of you push it from the backside and then all four pushed from the backside and they could move the car and remove it from there. Now this is on a lighter tone. This is integrating the efforts of the employees. So when he integrated the efforts of the employee, the work could be done. So this is again the importance of directing, that under directing, all the employees' individual efforts are integrated with the group efforts or to achieve the organizational goals. Then the third importance is it helps the employees to realize their full potential. Now under directing, the work is being done but the people may not be putting in their full effort. So it is the manager or the supervisor or the uh, superior um, who he has to see that the people who are doing the work, they're putting in their maximum, that he's able to extract the potential out of the employees, the full potential of the, out of the employees. That is where the manager sees what this person is, can do, he's fit to do. And therefore he gives him only that particular job to be done so that he can work to the at most to maximum of his potential. So if each person is putting in its maximum potential, then in that case, the organization goals can be easily achieved. Then directing facilitates introduction of needed change. A man by nature does not want to change. We resist change and everybody resists change. So even the employees resist change, but change is inevitable. In fact, the only thing that is constant is change. So how do you incorporate change in your organization? Again, the manager has to do that. 
Now he has to make sure that whatever change takes place, the workers are able to incorporate it. That he does by motivating them. For example, computers are to be introduced in the organization and now each worker has to be trained for computers. Now for that, they'll have to stay back after the working hours and learn computers. Now, nobody wants to do that. That's a change. Nobody wants to stay back after working hours. Now the manager under the directing function can motivate them that see your work environment will increase, your chances of promotion will increase, your knowledge will increase, and learning ability will increase. So this is also going to affect you. So by proper motivation, he can make them understand that the change is required and accept the change. So directing facilitates introduction of needed change. And then finally, directing helps to bring stability and balance in the organization. So now everybody's understanding what the work is to be done. They're doing it. They're working to the maximum potential. The leader is there. He's motivating them. They have absolutely no problem. And this cooperation and coordination between all the departments, then why would anybody want to leave the organization? So when people don't leave an organization, this leads to stability in the organization and balance in the organization. So commitment towards the organization, loyalty towards the organization is encouraged and increased with proper directing. So this fosters cooperation and commitment amongst the employees. So this is the fifth importance of directing. And with that, we go on to the case study and let us see what has been asked. And then we'll go about looking for that particular thing, which importance of directing is reflected in the above case. Now we know there are five importance. Let us see which one is being talked about in this. Mr. Ravi, the production manager of Development Limited, plans to replace the old machinery with latest one. All the workers are comfortable in operating the old machine, therefore resisted the change. However, Mr. Ravi decided to demonstrate the working of new machinery and inform workers about its need and advantages. On attending the demonstration, workers were satisfied and happily accepted the change. So which importance are we talking about here? So go through it, recollect. I'll give you a moment for that. Yes, I'm sure you got the answer. And the answer is facilitates introduction of change. The importance is it facilitates the introduction of change. And we, how did we come to know about this? Resisted change. The workers resist change. They don't want to change. And therefore, the answer is directing facilitates introduction of change and that's all in this video thank you